deliberate practice. Hello everyone, it is July 27th, 2021. It's Tuesday. It's Herp Tuesday! Welcome to this episode. So today I'm going to be talking about deliberate practice and specifically looking at a couple of sections from Le Jardin Moyé, uh, the, the Garden in the Rain, by Jacques de la Prela, that I, I did an episode on that three, week, uh, three weeks, three months ago, practicing a certain section. And there are two spots in it that I've sort of been deliberately avoiding doing any deliberate practice on so that I could do this episode and, and talk to you about them and the idea of deliberate practice and what it means. Um, so deliberate practice, uh, Anders Ericsson, I think sort of popularized this notion when he's looking at this idea of, of what separates experts from non-experts is the amount of hours they put in and specifically the amount of deliberate practice that they do. And then that of course was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers. I have a lot to say about that because I think uh, some of that gets, it's not quite so cut and dried, but, um, it's sort of outside the scope of today's episode. But certainly the idea of practicing deliberately is really very useful. And it's hard necessarily to great, get a, a perfect definition of what that means. But one, one definition I kind of like is the idea of being concerned more with the process rather than the result. So, of course, we oftentimes we think, how do we practice? Well, we just play through a piece. And if we want to practice it more, we play through it again, right? It's a sort of repetition. But I think that in a way, sometimes that kind of becomes like a test at school where all you're concerned about, the only thing that matters is the result. So whether you have a deep understanding of the subject or not, doesn't matter. It's just, is the result good or bad? And instead, being focused on the, the process, does it feel good? Do you have a deep understanding of the subject or whatever? And letting the results take care of themselves later on. So, of course, if you're practicing to perform, you would, if you're practicing a piece and imagining you're performing it, then you kind of have that sense of practicing it as if it were a test trying to get it all correct. But what can happen is, is we're practicing, playing through a piece, maybe we get to a section that's a little bit challenging and, and, and we kind of, phew, we get through it and great, we move, we continue going on, right? Whereas deliberate practice, one of the things about that is to, to notice that that is challenging and go back and actually work on it and break it down and, and try to make it comfortable, try to make the, the process feel good. Um, so another, another idea of deliberate practice is practicing the hard bits or just being involved in what you're doing. So sheer repetition, you think about driving, like you might've been driving for 30 years, but do you drive any better than you did 20 years ago? Maybe yes, maybe no. You've done a lot of repetition, but you probably haven't thought about it and worked on getting it becoming a better driver, right? And you haven't necessarily been in situations where we're playing harder and harder pieces where you need to be a better driver. Um, but sheer repetition won't necessarily result in something being better. And so I see deliberate practice as being particularly a good concept for two things. One is getting better at something in a short amount of time, right? Speeding up the process. So repetition might work, but we can actually maybe instead of just sort of rote repetition where we're not being involved in the process, to be really involved in the practice can speed up the amount of time we have to take. And also to push through a plateau. So again, that idea that maybe we, we don't feel we're improving. And so to really try and figure out what we want to get better and how we could tackle that and, and ways we could make that get better. Um, and so here, there's these two little sections, which I felt, because a lot of the time, so in this piece, most of it for me is just learning the notes. I don't necessarily have to master any new techniques, but these, which involve glisses, I realized were spots that I, I, I need to practice that technique. I, I haven't, it's, it felt awkward to me. And so even though I've been playing this, so for over three months, I guess, each time when I get to this section, these two sections, I will do it, I'll get through it, but I won't stop and actually try and make it feel comfortable because I've been wanting to do this recording instead. So they've gotten a little bit better, but not much. Whereas I imagine today, just in these, whatever, 10 or 15 minutes, there's going to be a big improvement. They're going to feel it's going to, both those sections will hopefully feel much better compared to three months of like playing it through once and, and, and not having, not really spending much time on it. 
And anyway, I guess, yeah, what is deliberate practice? Hopefully, simply by watching me do this, that gives you an idea of, of a certain type of practice that might be helpful for you. So here's this first section. It's a little gliss, a left-hand gliss. So we, we've been going... Oh, sorry, it starts here. There we are. And the left hand has to come down and find this octave right here. So the, the left hand's glissing, right? Left hand's glissing down into here. And what I realized was I'm, I'm happy going, ending a gliss lower down. That's something that happens in a number of pieces, and I've done that before, but I don't think I've ever done anything up quite this high and, and trying to maybe have a normal hand position instead of an open octave hand position. So I haven't been happy with the getting out of it, right? Having that feel and sound smooth. So it, here is the goal, right? To just be able to go smoothly into that. So. It's partly because, yeah, it's up high now. I could try to do an open octave, but I think that's going to feel awkward because it's, it's so high up here. But that's worth thinking about. Like, why does this feel harder than going down there? So instead, I think I want to just practice find, reaching out, finding this octave, and smoothly transitioning into it, right? So. I don't need to practice adding the right hand here at the moment. I can just start with this gliss and maybe just a slow gliss. Let's try that. I could maybe start a little bit lower. I don't necessarily need to start on the B. I could go. finger, my fourth finger, getting ready to find that octave as I approach. So let's let's try getting into that again. Okay, so now I'm, I'm much happier with this, but I'm experiencing a little bit of difficulty because now I have the added complication of also having to find the right hand, maybe kind of look for that because it hasn't played for a while to find this B or this these two notes and at the same time still have the left hand feel quite as good as it did. So. Yeah. So that adding that right hand now, now's a good time to add the right hand. The left hand's feeling pretty good on its own. The right hand, as I saw, is, is throwing it off a little bit. So now we're going to add the right hand. Again, I might start a little bit lower. octave which is great um, so which is potentially helpful just to be aware of of course in the right hand it's with one and three but this transition here to get this last gliss and then the octave without any any sort of gap or, 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 or hiccup or stumble is not entirely 
nearly as, as, as easy or smooth as I would like. Um, pretty good let's try yeah so I feel this nice sense of what the left hand is has to do and feel like on that beautiful so just in that little what I don't know you what it was maybe five minutes or something that has done more than playing through it again like maybe say once a day getting through that section just just so I'm, i do this and i end up here but but this was always a little bit rough because i never spent time working on it right again wanting to save it for this video but it wasn't going to get any better i could do that for a year and might get a little bit better but just by actually doing some intense focus practice on exactly what was bothering me, which was this, and to a lesser extent getting the right hand up there and, and coordinating. Already that's feeling really, really good. So I'll probably do a little bit more of that deliberate practice, and then it might be that two or three or four sessions of that might be enough, and then it can just become, like anything else here, something I'm very comfortable with and just part of the general practice of, of playing through it. Um, and not having to break down that little spot. So let's look at the other spot, just 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 for me, because this is definitely helpful for me. Um, and that is the the very end. So this is kind of interesting because we get again, it's it's not something I typically encounter in a piece where we're going. Hands are crossing over and, and there's this crescendo decrescendo and excuse me and so we also have so I want to practice this transition I want to end up here with on both these E's and again I've been kind of faking it right I've been I've been doing it but knowing that it doesn't again the result may be okay but the process didn't feel great um and so now i'm going to really dig into this see what i can do so and i'm not sure how best to approach it right um but i'm gonna i'm gonna start by doing this gliss where the right hand's gone down to that e and the left hand's up here so this is fairly loud <laughs> getting softer. So I'm going to try that a little bit. In terms of finding this note, I'm kind of relying on my ear rather than looking. So, so I'm watching for the left hand and hoping because I will hear, I'll hear the D sharp, right? So I once I hear that, I know the E is next because they're the same sound, right? Um, and this is this is fa fairly straightforward. And certainly the ending is something to practice. Again, finding that consistently in both hands and, and having them both the timing work out. But now I want to try so the term out. So I'm coming down here, I'm coming up here, and I think ah, so I think the left hand is not so comfortable turning around way up here, right? So I'm gonna to have to maybe rotate back. I could support the harp a little bit on my knee, which I don't normally do, some people do, but uh, I don't normally do that. I can support it on the edge of my shoulder so that I'm not, you know, hitting myself in the face as I try to do this turnaround. Um, and I would ideally like to, of course, we I have to stop I'm not going to be able to go this all the way up and then start all the way back down, but to try to have that sound as seamless as possible so that it's not, but
play that from the beginning. Nice, that felt pretty good. So I'm kind of watching for this as I head down, but then doing a quick glance up to get that E in the left thumb. So watching for the right hand and then so I'm reaching down, I know I'm going to get that E and I can then quickly glance up and find this E up here. Hmm. I want more... I felt that the left hand cut out there a little bit. We heard... Uh, that, that, that I want... Because I want... That, that, that nice um, crescendo up. is always hit your finger at a slightly different spot and these small fingers, small fingers, these small strings are, uh, I just don't want to get a blister by doing too much of this. You can hear, there's that pause, right? pretty good. Yeah. So I think I, I, I think I'll, I'll stop there. I'm going to do a little bit more practice on my own, but again, just Doing that is going to, I, I could practice this for a year just, just playing through it and not doing any sort of practice like that and it's not going to get any better. Whereas just doing this five minutes or whatever, uh, already I'm much happier with how it feels and then how it sounds. Um, so hopefully that gives you some ideas. Again, I want to I do more, I will definitely do more episodes talking about deliberate practice or talking about it and also I have an idea of, of doing a uh, an episode where I'm playing the piano, which of course I'm not particularly good at. And so I think that would be really interesting in terms of how I would, again, that contrast between deliberate practice and, and sort of just playing and enjoying playing through, but, but not stopping and fixing things that don't quite feel the way you want or, or, or realizing there's a spot to, to maybe work on specifically. So yeah, I hope that gives you some ideas to take away in terms of your own practice. And um, thanks for watching. I will see you in two weeks' time. Cheers.